This week on a special post-election Montclair News Lab. What was it like to cover New Jersey's most important races? We debrief our reporters. We made our way down to the floor of the Mendonez headquarters. Hey guys, so we're here at Mikey Sherrill's campaign. And we'll take you behind the scenes of Montclair State's election night coverage, streaming around the world and on television here on Channel 34. There's a lot of people here who are really talented at um, adapting on the fly and kind of flying by the seat of their pants. And later, from politics to a different kind of contact sport, the Montclair State men's soccer team is having an outstanding season. And it uh, really brought us together as a unit, as a team, as a brotherhood, as a family. From the School of Communication and Media at Montclair State University, this is Montclair News Lab. Hello and welcome to Montclair News Lab. From the School of Communication and Media, I'm Ashley Kuzikonki. And I'm Amanda Eustis. Each week we scour campus, Montclair and New Jersey to bring you news and stories we'll be talking about all week. We start this week with politics. After an exciting election night, the results are in. Though it was close, New Jersey Democrat Senator Bob Menendez defeated Republican candidate Bob Hugan. Menendez will serve his third term in the Senate. And in the House, there were Democrat upsets throughout the state. New Jersey's congressional delegation is almost totally blue. We start with the Senate race. Bryn McDonald was at Menendez headquarters on election night. Here's a piece of one of her live reports. We made our way down to the floor of the Menendez headquarters and we are here with Josh Firestone, who is actually a former Montclair State student. He is now an alumni, and Josh is here supporting Bob Menendez. Josh, how do you feel about the vibe in this room, the atmosphere, everything about it? Everybody is really happy to be here. It's very excited, supporting. She's back in the studio now to share some behind the scenes stories. So Britton, I was actually at uh, the losing candidates party, uh, Bob Hugan, and you were, you know, at Bob Menendez, and there was a whole bunch of crazy things that I saw there. What was the craziest thing that you saw? So I was at the Menendez headquarters, and he was obviously the Democratic candidate for the Senate race. So there were very few, if any, Trump supporters in the room, but there was a baby Trump balloon flying around the room all night. <laughs> we wanted to keep an eye on it to see what would happen at the end of the night, if it would be popped or what would happen to it. Uh, we kind of lost track of it throughout the night, but I would say that is the craziest thing I saw at the headquarters. It's definitely crazy. Yeah. Now, what was the energy like? I was in here in this newsroom, but you guys were in the heart of it all. What was the energy like from the people? So we were in the midst of what could have been a historic Senate race if Hugan had won because New Jersey had not elected a Republican senator in over 46 years. So at first it was pretty calm. There weren't too many people who were super upbeat, but they did do sound checks with victory songs and saying, here's your uh, senator, your new senator, Bob Menendez. So as the night went on and they started calling states um, and who won, it definitely got more upbeat, and when the news station started calling Menendez as the winner, it was crazy, and when he came out, it was a crazy atmosphere, and everyone was just so happy, dancing around, there was music playing, so it definitely changed throughout the night. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah. And now you're a senior this year, so congrats on almost graduating. <laughs> and, um, you know, what? have you done anything like this before? So I have never been a reporter on a live production. I have done stand-ups, and I have reported, but I have never done that live. So it was definitely different having the control room in your ear and having them talking to you, going out, finding different people to interview, and just being around all of the news reporters from big stations. I saw reporters from Fox, from CNN, from News 12 New Jersey, and it was just really cool to see all of that. No, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for we having me. We enjoyed your company. <laughs> In New Jersey's 11th Congressional District, newcomer Mikey Sherrill is getting ready to go to Washington. She becomes the first Democrat in 24 years to represent the district, beating her Republican opponent, Jay Weber, reporter Louis Biondanello, covered Sherrill on election night. Here's a piece of one of his live reports. What do these midterms mean in general as a whole? Not just Mikey Sherrill, but the whole midterms in general. Well, it's, it's our opportunity to regain our democracy, which I think is under attack. Lewis joins us now with his reporter's notebook. Hi, Lewis. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. How are you guys? And you, I understand, were at the Mikey Sherrill campaign headquarters. Now, what was the craziest thing you saw there? Well, the craziest thing had to be one, one Mikey Sherrill supporter. What he was dressed as what was very apparent to everybody. He wanted to be seen. He wanted to be reported upon. So for the viewers at home, what, what he was dressed as, 
He was dressed in a, in a full button down shirt with buttons all over from different campaigns. He had President Obama's campaign button. He had Mikey Sherrill's uh, Black Lives Matter. It, mm. it, the full shirt, he had a hat on that had buttons all over it. He was giving out pocket constitutions. So after I interviewed him, he gave all three of us a pocket constitution. Oh. And he was just, he wanted everybody to know the facts. What and a character, right? Yeah, really. He really was. And he knew what he was talking about, too. That's good. Yeah, that's definitely good to have there. And you are a freshman this year. Yes. Um, so what is that like, you know, being a freshman, being fresh into college and attending at a political event like this and so important like that as well? So coming straight out of high school, I've never been to anything like this, an uh, uh, actual national political event like this. And I think it was interesting going to Mikey Sherrill's camp campaign because they weren't sure if she was going to win. So it was really on edge throughout the night. But as they kept going, the excitement kept ramping up and it kind of felt like a sporting event. And people were very excited. And I just think it was awesome to be there. That's mm. awesome. Well, good for you. <laughs> um, that's definitely such an experience. So thank you so much for being on the show with us. Yes, thank you. Now, this election had all of the excitement of the presidential race. It was seen as a report card on the Trump administration. News Lab reporter Chris Hornstein asked students what this election means in regards to Trump's agenda. You could either decide to help push Trump's agenda or you could decide to help put an end to it. it most midterms haven't been like this popular, I should say. Like, it's important to vote because it's going to affect us, like, later on down the road so much. A lot of people wanted to see change, and I feel like it was, I feel like the, that call was answered. When it comes to, like, her body, her choice, and all that stuff, so it's all about, like, protecting women's rights, her, like, equal pay, all, like, the Me Too movement, how much... It's been like progressing. Affordable health care. I was voting for uh, free tuition, which I'm pretty sure a lot of college students can agree on, but, uh, um, and lower taxes. As an immigrant from a different country, I come from Ukraine, and uh, issues about immigration is near and dear to me. And what's going on with Trump, he's kind of like, um, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or not, but he's posing as if he's very much against immigration. And, uh, and I don't like that. Almost 100 Montclair State University students participated in our election night coverage, which streamed digitally around the world and right here on Montclair's Channel 34. Altenay Wells shows what it takes to mount such an ambitious student production. I think if you look at other colleges, universities across the country, you would, it would be really tough to find another school that's taken on such an ambitious project. There's a lot of people here who are really talented at um, adapting on the fly and kind of flying by the seat of their pants, but it's, they're really good at it, so it works. The amount of people that put some time and dedication, our executive producers, the other anchors, the reporters that are out in the field at different campaigns, all of the people behind the scenes, either running a camera, being a PA, um, working lights, being in the control room. I think without each and every person, it wouldn't be as successful as it is so far. It's important for me as a journalist to stay in touch with, with young people who are always, you know, refreshing my understanding of, of issues. And so I learn a lot from them. And I hope maybe once in a while they might pick up something from me. I think we should all be really proud of the fact that students kind of took that on and, you know, had no fear of failure and are just, you know, kind of putting one foot in front of the other. So I think that's something to be really proud of. The hard work paid off with some impressive coverage of the election, which you can watch at MontclairNewsLab.tv. Every week, we check in with the very latest from our campus newspaper, The Montclairian. Here's what they've been up to this week.
So this week in news, we have election coverage. We had Adriana Carballo, Genesis Orbando, and Christina Urban go to the different poll locations that Montclair provided, either access to or had here on campus, um, for students to go out and vote. This week, we had um, Carla Gutierrez come to campus, who is the editor of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg documentary, RGB, that came out this summer. Um, it's a pretty big deal. It's being uh, talked about for a lot of different awards. So to have her come and give us the behind the scenes editing insight was really interesting. We have an article all about it in the entertainment section this week. So this week in the sports section, we have um, coverage of the men's soccer and Jack playoff game, the championship game that we ended up winning and beating uh, Ramapo College 5-0. Um, so you should all check that out. A new issue of The Montclairian is published every Thursday. Grab your own copy or visit themontclairian.org. It's finally November, and if you're thinking Thanksgiving, you're a month behind. Let's check in with Christian Curatola at WMSC. It's the first week of November, so you know what that means? It's Christmas all month. And the month after, we're going to be doing nothing but playing Christmas music here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. That means that the whole time we are simply having a wonderful Christmas time at the radio station only- No! You can't stop Christmas! No! Hi. I'm Patrick Eddie for 90.3 WMSC. Don't worry. For November and most of December, we are going to be playing the best alternative rock and local music like we always do. Maybe a holiday feature here or there. But we're cool. We're cool. Don't worry. You should still tune in to us on 90.3 FM, WMSCRadio.com, or the iHeartRadio app. Guys at the desk, back to you. Sorry, Pat. Unfortunately, I'm totally on Christian's level. Make sure you tune in on WMSCRadio.com, the iHeartRadio app, and 90.3 on FM Radio. Finally, politics is one kind of contact sport. Soccer is another. As we head briefly in our Montclairian Minute, the men's soccer team is having an amazing season. Our sports unit, TBD, has our story. Montclair State University's men's soccer team had a successful season. Here are four, four moments that were key to their success. September 22nd. October 6th, October 20th, October 23rd. Personally, I think it's probably the best team I've been a part of, like environment-wise. Everybody's happy, there's no cliques, everybody plays for each other, so I enjoy it. Out of all the four teams I've been on, uh, it's probably the hardest working team we've had. We got a couple of freshmen that stepped up to the plate this year. Every kid on the team's working. Definitely made it interesting at the end. I think we got to work on a few things this week in practice and get after Rampo on uh, Friday. It's amazing, you know, to put on a performance like we did. I didn't think we were going to score as many goals, but to just keep scoring, the energy in the stadium was great. And the fans, we fed off their energy the whole time and just kept scoring and scoring, and it was a great win. We put in a lot of work this season, like in the training ground and it uh, really brought us together as a unit, as a team, as a brotherhood, as a family. It's awesome. I mean, it's something that, you know, we talk about all the time, getting t-shirts, and uh, we've, we were able to accomplish it. And since uh, we got here in preseason, this is one of our goals that we've, we know first we go regular season, and then we have the conference championship, and then hopefully we can make a good run to the NCAA tournament. From the NJAC championships, we'll see you TBD. Final score, Montclair State 5, Ramapo 0. Thank you for joining us on Montclair News Lab. From all of us from the School of Communication and Media, I'm Amanda Eustace. And I'm Ashley Kuzikonki. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Montclair News Lab and follow us on Twitter at MSU News Lab to view the latest newscast and get a behind-the-scenes look at our weekly productions. We leave you with a photo of the week taken by Angela Lono.